Welcome back to Tabletop Tinkerer. This is the Tabletop and I'm the Tinkerer. I've got something to run past you today. Something that may sound, well, may sound crazy at first, but I really don't think it is. In fact, I think it makes a lot of sense in the context of the game that we are playing. I put emphasis on that term, game. Because D&D and other tabletop RPGs are games. Sometimes we get caught up in what is optimal. What's going to be the best decision? What is going to make me the most proficient? What is going to give me the best possible chance of a good outcome? And that is 100% fine. Taking that to its extreme is also fine. But also doing things simply because, and only because, they are fun is also fine, if that's how you want to play. If that's not going to disturb anybody else at your table, which is a conversation you need to have with the fellow people that you play with. But sometimes it's okay just to do things because they're fun, especially if they are also helpful. If they're not a totally disastrous choice and it's fun, why shouldn't you do it? You should absolutely do it if that's what you want to do. The thing that I'm talking about today is being a spellcaster whether that's full caster, half caster, quarter caster, and dipping a level. Half of you already know where I'm going with this, based off my tone and the things I've said already. Dipping into Barbarian. Yeah, you should. 100%, not 100% of the time, but when it comes up and you think it sounds like a good idea and it may be fun, you should dip into Barbarian, absolutely. 100%, you should dip into Barbarian. There are benefits there. The things that are stopping you from dipping a level into Barbarian are because somebody told you that you shouldn't. That's really it. Somebody told you that you shouldn't. Or you're playing at a fully optimized table. If you are playing at a fully optimized table, this isn't the channel for you most of the time. A lot of the times I'm gonna be discussing things that are fun that are not optimal. And you shouldn't do them at those tables. It's going to make you less optimal, 100%. If you want to be optimized, check out those optimization channels. Put optimization in your search bar to get the results you want. For example, channels like Treant Monk. Great channel. As someone that doesn't really optimize, I even listen to him because you can learn a lot about the game if you listen to people that optimize the game and their characters. By definition, those people have a clear cut and very thorough understanding of the game, and you can learn a lot from them whether you optimize or not. But that's not what we're doing today. That's not what I like to do on my channel. That's not what I choose to focus on. Other than that, the only reason you have for not playing Barbarian, or rather dipping a level into Barbarian as primarily a spellcaster, is because someone told you that you can't or that you shouldn't. Or you just looked at it and saw some of the stipulations of rage saying you can't cast a spell and you can't concentrate on spells and that was enough to deter you and that's fair i understand that but let's let's pull that back a little bit let's explore why maybe you should reconfigure that thought process into uh well i absolutely should because i think you should as a matter of fact i have done this before and oh it was a lot of fun let's get into it the first thing is that to multi-class into barbarian on top of having your class prerequisites that you already have, whether it be Warlock, Sorcerer, or Wizard, you also have to have the Barbarian prerequisite of a 13 in Strength. I'm sorry, but I just don't ever see the multi-class requirements as a barrier for multi-classing once. If you start getting into multi-classing a second time into a third class, or a fourth class, or if you want to go to the legendary or if you want to call it infamous absurd character if you know you know great online story by the way if you don't know go look it up a b s e r d i believe but getting the 13 strength as a spellcaster is not particularly difficult it just isn't and i'm gonna leave it there if you disagree with that tell me why in the comments below please i'd love to hear why i just don't think it is i really don't if it was a 15 in strength and we're having a different discussion, but it's a 13 in strength. I don't see that as a problem. Maybe you can't do the dip until later on, but 
to me, you could take this dip at any time. You could take it at level two. You could take it at level 18. It's going to be fine either way. I think you should take it sooner. I think it is more effective at the earlier levels, but just getting the 13 in strength is not overwhelmingly challenging for any spellcaster, I don't believe. The biggest problem spellcasters have, especially full spellcasters, most of the time, is defense. Now, there are ways to circumvent them, some better than what I'm offering here. This is simply another option for you to think about when considering defense for your spellcaster. Largely, this is a defensive option. Most of the time, barbarians are thought of as very offensive, which is why when you think of crossing them with spellcasters, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But what do you get right away as proficiencies when you multi-class into barbarian, even just one level? You get shields. Why wouldn't you be able to use a shield as a spellcaster unless you don't already have the proficiency? And if you already have the proficiency in shields, that automatically makes this a little less viable or less interesting. But hold, hold it. That's not all you get. You don't get the armor proficiencies of medium armor, which you would if you started as barbarian. And that's not a huge deal because you also get unarmored defense. Unarmored defense. So you can already pick up a shield that gives you an extra two. And if you're not playing a race that gives you an armor defense, maybe that's just not the race you want to play. Maybe the race that you do want to play doesn't give you an armor defense. Not every race, a lot of them don't have an armor defense. It's not the predominant, it's not night vision, or I'm sorry, dark vision. It's not poison resistance. It's an armor defense. It's a lot less popular among the races. You can then add your constitution along with your dexterity modifier. Your dexterity, if you were already using that for your AC, was already built in. That was already factored in. You don't have to do anything extra to get that. And your constitution bonus is probably more than a plus zero, a plus nothing, because as a spellcasters, we like constitution, don't we? For concentration. Did I mix those up a second ago? I may have. If I did, I apologize. Constitution bonus because of your concentration on spells. You're, you're just automatically getting at least, at minimum, I'm assuming, a plus three to your armor class instantly without doing anything else, just taking this dip. That's not nothing. That makes you inherently less squishy. On top of that, you're getting a D12 hit dice. That's a lot bigger of a hit dice than, say, a wizard of a D6. In fact, that's double. That's double the D6 dice of your wizard. We're just beefing this guy up in the ways that spellcasters find themselves most vulnerable. Again, this is a defensive option to consider. And then we get to the main course, Rage. Probably the biggest reason why people don't take Barbarian Dips as spellcasters, and the primary reason why I think you should, and when I did it, I was very glad I did. The biggest thing that sticks out when you see Rage, it says you can't cast spells while raging. And you also can't continue to concentrate on a spell that you'd already cast and were concentrating on. That's a little bit more worded than it offers in the rules, but that is the language that they're trying to put in your head. Well, I offer this for you. Spell slots are limited, especially at lower levels. And you on the concentration factor, you can't concentrate on two separate spells anyway. So if we're going to bring up concentration, the fact that you can't concentrate on a spell's by that logic, once you've taken a spell that you have to concentrate on, you should never, ever, ever take another spell that you concentrate on. And all the battlefield control wizards out there just lost their minds. With good reason. Because you should absolutely have other options to concentrate on. So let's think of it this way. You're out of spell slots or getting low on them. You find yourself in a position that's really not great. And we'll get to why rage can help you out in those situations that aren't great. And of course, I'm talking about being engaged in a melee combat that you really don't want to be in. And you need a defensive option to help you out. Consider the rage. 
a magical effect. Who says that because rage is in the title and that's what the feature is called, that you have to be angry to do it? No. You're invoking a magical energy and you're focusing it so deeply on your defensive capabilities, which will give you essentially double HP by giving you resistance to most damages from the physical sense in the situation you have now found yourself in that you don't want to be in. And you're focusing on that. And that's why you can't focus on other spells. That's why you can't cast another spell. You're using all your magical energy to protect yourself. That's going to be very helpful. I think the concept of it is what gets in the way. It doesn't have to be that you're angry. It can be that it's an ability. Don't, I know it says feature. It doesn't have to be the prime feature of your character. It can just be another ability that you have to turn on to. And again, the whole reason to do this is for situations that you find yourself in when inevitably, and this will happen, when somebody has a sword that is slicing at your face and is going to take down your very limited health pool dramatically. And there are other options. There's a shield spell. Yes, you can't do that when you're raging. The shield spell may or may not work. And if you're not taking Barbarian or haven't done other things to increase your AC by default, spellcasters don't have very high AC. In my campaign right now, we're at level 12 or my player's at level 12, myself being the DM, and I think our spellcaster just now has an AC of 13. Not because he hasn't had the opportunity, he's just been focusing on other stuff. And guess what? The unarmored defense, it can stack with things like bracers of defense, or a ring of protection, or a cloak of protection. All those things can add extra AC. So you can just get the higher AC. You're substituting that for the shield spell, but you're also getting the resistance to the damage if it gets through that AC. Flip the script. All you have is a shield spell. You don't have that higher AC. You get the plus five. Maybe, maybe it works. You had to burn a spell slot to do it. And if it doesn't work, you're getting hit with the full damage. Now, I'm not here to tell you that taking the shield spell and using the shield spell over raging is not a better choice. It may very well be. I'm willing to succeed that. It's just another option. If you play enough games and create enough characters, you will find yourself doing the same thing over and over and over again. And that gets a little stale after a while. Why not try something different? Play a spellcaster and lean on Rage as a crutch, a defensive crutch for when you find yourself in that sticky situation that you really don't want to be in on the back lines. And I promise you, your DM, he's going to put you there. It's going to happen. How many times have you been there already? It's going to happen again. Don't be afraid. Dip into Barbarian. Pick up a Rage. Use it. And with that said... I don't have any more gears to turn on this subject. If you have anything that you would like to say about what I've brought forth to you today, please leave it in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts on this matter. If you liked the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up down below. And if you want to know when the next video is coming, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you when the shop opens back up.